Hello, welcome to lesson 13 of the Learn Swift for Beginners series. In this video, you're going to learn about optionals, and it's probably one of the most confusing things for beginners. If you've ever looked at Swift code and you've noticed exclamation marks or question marks in the code, then you've come across optionals. So let's get started and find out what it's all about. So right here, I have a playground and I have declared a class blog post. In fact, if you've seen uh, episode nine, um, the first lesson on classes, then this is going to look familiar because this is um, the example that we used for lesson nine when I first talked to you about classes. Now we declared a couple of properties up here um, for our blog post class. And these properties, they represent certain things about what a blog post might have. So for example, the title, the body, the author, number of comments, and you can actually safely ignore this function. So I'm just going to remove it because we're gonna focus on this stuff up here. You'll notice that each time I declare a property right here, I immediately initialize it to a value. So uh, title, body, author are all initialized um, to an empty string right when they're declared and comments is set to zero right, right when it's declared. Now this is all fine and dandy, but what if you actually want uh, some of these properties to be empty? For example, what if I want to tell if the blog post has an author or it doesn't have any author? You might argue that, well, I can just check if author is equal to an empty string, and if it's equal to an empty string, then maybe there's no author. Well, what if the author isn't actually a string? What if it's actually you know, we have another class here and we call it person. And let's say that there's a name and we'll initialize the empty string. But, you know, okay, so in this case, person um, is assigned to author. So, you know, blog post has an, uh, has an author because it has this person object. So how do we distinguish um, there being no author for a blog post? Well, you have to be able to declare an author property and leave it empty because some blog posts may not have an author. So the way to do this is if you remember from way, way back then, maybe um, lesson, lesson two on data types, I think, um, you can actually specify for your variables the specific data type that it can store. If you don't specify it, basically the data type is inferred from what you assign into it. Okay, so. For example, if I wanted the title to be able to be empty, I would have to declare the type. I'd get rid of this equals empty string because we don't want to assign any, anything to it, right? We want to declare this property, but leave it empty. I would do it like that. I would you know, do the colon, specify the specific type, and then I would put question mark. And that is an optional right there. Uh, so when I declare this title, is empty and this part basically tells us that the data type of title is string and this question mark attached to the string data type tells us that it could be uh, nil which means nothing or empty it could be nil or it could actually contain a string so contrast this with the body property here this when it is declared is assigned this empty string. So it's always going to have a value, right? Whether it's empty string or maybe in the future we assign some text into it, it it's going to have some text. But, you know, this title property could be empty. In fact, it is empty right now as we declare it. So going back to this example with the author, potentially some blog posts may not have an author. So we can't just, you know, initialize the author property to a person object because that would mean all blog posts at least have a, a person attached to the author, right? We want to make this property able to be empty, right? So the way we do that, again, is we specify the specific data type, put the question mark there next to the data type, and we get rid of that part because we don't actually want to assign anything to it. Okay, so in this way, we have a blog post class which has an optional title property has a body which is initialized to an empty string so it at least always has a value 
uh, and it may or may not have a person you know it could have nobody assigned as the author or it could actually have a person object assigned as the author and number of comments will always have a value and starting at zero so you're going to want to pay attention now because I'm going to tell you how you should think of these optional properties that we have here and this is sort of metaphor or visual that you can think of um, that I was taught when I was learning this stuff and that is to think of the title property this optional uh, string it could optionally contain a value or not think of it like a box it's labeled string but you can't see what's inside the box you don't know if there's actually a string object inside or it could just be an empty box right? it could be an empty gift box if someone if you've been really bad and someone gives you an empty gift for Christmas that's never happened to me but if it has to you let me know in the comment section below but anyways you can think of uh, an optional property um, like a box that may contain the actual object or it may not so how can you find out if there's actually uh, the string object inside or not well you have to unwrap that box right you have to unwrap that gift in order to look inside and see and get at the, the actual object and that's exactly what we have to do in code now with our optional properties so let me let me create a new blog post object here let me say um, post equals blog post like that and what we're going to do here is we're going to say hey print out uh, post dot body plus um, I don't know plus hello something like that okay so it basically just prints out hello because body is empty but let's just assign it to something like that so then we have something like hey hello right that totally makes sense because body we've initialized it to hey right when we create uh, the blog post object it's already set to hey and then we concatenate hello to it and so when we print post dot body plus hello you know you're accessing that property and then you're appending hello anyways that makes sense so we can no longer do that with something like the title right because that's an optional it's it's wrapped up in a gift box and you don't know if it's empty inside or if there's actually a string object inside so you can't blindly use it you have to unwrap that gift box and and check if there's a value or not and then use it so now before we use title we have to check if there's actually a string object or if there's actually a value inside that optional and the way we do that is we do something called optional binding okay so it's kind of like an if statement so you say if but then you use the word let and if you remember uh, using the keyword let is declaring a constant right um, in fact that's exactly what this is you're declaring a constant here if let actual title equals title and then you open up these curly brackets so what you're doing here is you're testing sorry not title I meant post dot title because this is the optional property here what you're doing here is you're saying that you're testing you're unwrapping this um, this title property this optional and you're saying if there is a value in there then assign it to this constant called actual title and then inside here um, you can use actual title as the value but if there is nothing inside this optional and if you unwrap it and it's empty it's nil then don't execute this code inside so that's why it has an if statement uh, here you're basically testing to see if there's a value inside this optional if there is you assign it to this constant and then you use this constant inside here uh, if there isn't then it's just going to skip over this whole if statement so in here we can safely now we can say you know print actual title uh, plus um, I don't know salute so there is no value um, in title so it actually skips all this but let, let's say for instance we say here post dot title equals um, yo like that so now you can see when it does this optional binding and it 
uh, unwraps this title because we have assigned something into it here. It finds that, hey, I unwrapped the optional. There is a value. I'm going to assign it to actual title. So inside this if statement, we can use actual title um, and do this. But if I didn't have this line here, let's comment this out. You can see that it, it completely skips this and it doesn't crash or do anything like that because um, we're safely you know, checking if there's a value inside that optional first and then we're using it. Now there's always different ways of doing things. So um, in the Swift programming language, there's actually a way to um, be a cowboy and skip all this. If you don't want to check it and you just want to use the value, you know, you know there's something inside, um, what you can do is you can use, you know, you're going to not check it. You're just going to use it. Uh, you can, it wouldn't be that, it would be post.title and you put this exclamation mark and this is called force unwrapping. So what you're telling Xcode is you're saying that, Hey, you know, I know there's a value in here. I don't need to check it. I just want to unwrap it right away using this exclamation mark and I want to use whatever is inside of there right in this case it's yo so here we're you know we're accessing post.title it's an optional property we don't care we're gonna force unwrap that and we're gonna take out that value and use it you know and so if you know there is a value inside you can do that but it gets a little dangerous because for example if there happens to not be a value in there and you're force unwrapping it and you're trying to you know use the value well there's an error because and this is the error you get fatal error unexpectedly right because when you use this exclamation mark you're expecting that there is a value unexpectedly found nil when unwrapping an optional value right that's exactly what I was telling you you're force unwrapping the title and you're trying to use it, but it was actually nil. So you actually get a crash. And in your career of building apps, you probably will see this error um, unexpectedly found nil. So now you know why. So the safer way to go would be actually to use optional binding. So I'm going to press uh, Command Z now, or Command Z for the Americans. And I'm going to undo, undo, all right. Do something like that. And this is optional binding. So. Another way where you can test before using is just, oops, it's just with good old fashioned if statement and testing if it's nil. So you can say something like um, testing for nil. You can say if post.title is not equal nil, then print post.title and because you have tested it that it's not nil in this if statement you can go ahead and force unwrap that and use it right so that works you can safely use force unwrapping because in this if statement you've just tested that it's not nil okay now the reverse if you want to check that it is nil is post.title equals equals nil okay it's not equals nil a lot of beginners make this mistake and they use one equal sign, but one equal sign is for assignment. Remember that. So if we're going to test for nil, you're going to use two equal signs like that. And this is like um, optional contains no value. Okay. Optional contains value. And in here for optional binding, optional contains value. So as with all of the other things we're learning with Swift, uh, we can go deeper. There's additional things to learn about optionals like optional chaining and other ways of using optionals. But this is your introduction. I wanted to, to tell you about what the question mark means and what the exclamation mark uh, force unwrapping and how to check an optional before using it. I wanted to introduce you to these kind of high level concepts. And practically speaking, you'll be using them most of the time like this. Um, and then in the future, we'll touch upon the more complex things about optionals. Also, you might be wondering why, why and when you would ever use optionals. But let me tell you, you definitely will use it when you're building apps. And when we do build our apps together, you'll know what they are. And you'll know how to declare optionals and how to unwrap them and how to check if they're nil.
because you've watched this lesson. Okay, so thanks for watching, and uh, please subscribe and thumbs up and share the video with uh, other people you know who want to learn Swift as well. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.